welcome to another late night tech. Okay, I've had this request out there for a while. Um, this episode is dedicated to installing an OpenVPN client on your OpenWRT router such that all of your clients on your LAN side of the router will be able to use the upstream VPN service provider. So you're sharing one VPN tunnel with all of your local hosts. Now this should be very straightforward. I've done this kind of thing on many a router in my day. And essentially, you know, how this normally works is you upload the OpenVPN package, you configure it, you configure uh, a network interface, like a tunnel interface, you configure some firewall rules and bam, you're in business. However, with OpenWRT, it just has not been that simple. I um, have not been able to actually install just the packages themselves. Um, every time I try, I get a kernel mismatch error. Even if I pull down the latest GitHub snapshot, run the update script, um, you know, get the latest packages basically, I, I cannot seem to get it done, even if I try to manually do it. So what I am going to be using uh, in this demonstration is basically a fresh, clean build. I am gonna show you um, which packages I included in the build. If you wanna go this route, you know what to do. All right, so let me, I'm actually in the router now. So we are gonna to go to our OpenWRT directory and we're gonna do a make menu config here. Now this is in my virtual lab, so I'm not doing this on a Raspberry Pi, but the uh, two packages that we need to add for the OpenVPN are the same. So that's not going to impact you in any shape, form, or fashion. Okay, the first one is an application in Lucy. And we need the Lucy app OpenVPN. So if you notice, I have selected that with the star. And just to explain the difference here, for those who don't know, M will not compile the package into your image, but it will manually just create the package as a file. Uh, so you'll have your, you know, the directory with your, your target directory that has all of your image files in it. And then you'll have another uh, directory that contains all of the individual package files themselves. But we want it baked into our image. Right, we want it pre-installed basically into the image. So you'll you'll hit the space bar or Y, um, and that will create the star there. And so, as you can see in the legend, that means built in. All right. The next one is under network, under VPN, and you want the Open VPN Open SSL. So that package there, exit, you will save your config and then you will make your file as normal, right? Uh, you'll compile your image and uh, once you have that image, you can then load it onto your open WRT hardware, whether that be a virtual machine um, as in my lab or the beloved Raspberry Pi 4. Okay, now I'm gonna be using NordVPN as my upstream VPN provider. I'm not sponsored by Nord. Um, this is just what I use personally. And the guide um, that I am using here, as you can see, OpenWRT CI Setup, um, has been provided by Nord. And um, I'm gonna be using Lucy and uh, CLI commands to get this configured. I'm kind of flip-flopping back and forth because I just found it easier to do some of this uh, in Lucy instead of doing it all via the command line. So just faster and easier. But essentially, um, I'm covering all of these steps that they have spelled out in this document. The document has two main sections. There is um, the basic setup to get the tunnel up and working. And then there are optional scripts uh, that you can use to help monitor the tunnel 
and restart the connection in case it detects the tunnel uh, dropping. So I will cover both of those for you. Okay, so once you have your router up and running, you are going to need to download a configuration file from NordVPN. This is a um, open VPN file, so it's, it's, I think, a pretty common format. So if you're using another provider, more than likely this, this process will be very, uh, very similar. Um, now, how, how Nord works here is you can, you know, run to their little wizard here and select the country that you want. Um, and it's going to give you, you know, an option of different servers and you can select that. So this is the server here that I've got in the U S and now I have the option to download, uh, the configuration that I want, the type of connection. So I'm going to go with the open VPN TCP connection. I'm going to click on this download config and then save file. All right. Once we've downloaded the file, you'll go into your router, you'll click VPN, open VPN. And down here under the configuration file upload section, we will click browse. We'll go find our file. There it is. We will click open. We'll give it a name here. Um, so let's see, I'm going to name mine and then click upload. And as you can see there, it created that instance for us. So I'm going to go ahead now and click edit. And what we need to do is uh, find the auth user pass string in this file right here. And we're going to hit the space bar and we're going to give it the path to our user and password file for the VPN service. So I'm going to call mine nordvpn.auth and click save. And then we're going to click save and apply here. Now we need to SSH to the router. So root is your username. That's the default network for a default installation. If yours is different, you'll use the you know IP address for your router and hit enter. Okay, so I've connected to a previous version of this router before over SSH. And as you can see, I'm getting this error message where it's telling me, oh, nope, sorry, the RSA key doesn't match. And it's telling me I need to run a command to remove it out of my cache so I can connect to this new one. So all we need to do here is just copy this. So I'm just going to highlight it, do an edit, copy, go down here, edit, paste, hit enter. Now I should just be able to up key and try again, up arrow. Yes, there's the new key. Great. So now what we'll do is uh, we need to edit or really create the file that we um, just told the uh, open VPN, you know, configuration that we want to use. So we're going to use VI, which is basically a text editor. And I'm going to give it the path of the file that I want to create. And here we are. Now to go ahead and create a line, I'm going to hit the capital I for insert. And then you're just going to type in your user, add whatever it is, and your password. And then you're going to hit the escape key. You're going to hit colon WQ for write and quit and hit enter. And we've created our file. All right, great. So now we'll go back to our Lucy screen here and we're going to enable this configuration and start it. As you can see, we have unsaved changes. So I'm going to click save and apply. Great. So now we need to create an interface. So I'm going to click on network interfaces. I click add new interface. And we should see now this ethernet adapter tunnel zero. And that's because we started that configuration. I'm going to give this a name Nord VPN tunnel. Very original. And um, it's an unmanaged protocol, basically. I'm going to click Create Interface. Make sure Bring Up on Boot is checked. Right, and just click Save. And then we'll click Save and Apply. So now we need to create a firewall zone. So we are going to click on Network Firewall. We're going to click Add. And we are going to give this guy a name, VPN Firewall. 
we are going to reject inputs, accept outputs, and reject forwards. We're going to enable masquerading. We want this to cover our NordVPN tunnel. And we are going to allow forward, uh, let's see, from zones LAN. And click Save. And then click Save and Apply. OK, awesome. So now we need to run back to our SSH. Um, and we need to basically double check this configuration. Um, I've just noticed sometimes it doesn't quite you know, create it uh, with all the options we need. So we are going to use Trust EVI again. And this time we're going to edit the firewall config file. OK. And you'll just use the arrow key to scroll down. OK, so I'm just kind of double checking here. I have my name. Reject, accept, reject, masquerading is one. Okay, I'm going to set an option. So I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to scroll over. I'm going to put a line beneath this masquerade line. So I'm going to click the O button. And that's going to open a new line. So I'm going to hit tab. And then I want option MTU underscore fix. Be set to true. Now I'm going to hit escape. And, uh, go to my config forwarding my source to be LAN, my destination VPN firewall. That looks good. Escape in uh, colon WQ to write and quit. All right, now we need to configure DNS. So again, VI, and we are going to oops, hop into our network configuration file. And then for our WAN interface, let's see here, we want Or a link, but nice and tidy tab over. Now these are the um, DNS servers for NordVPN. You could use something like Google or you know any other public server DNS provided by your ISP. Um, you know whatever you want to use here. Um, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to um, reboot and we'll be right back. Okay, after a quick reboot, we are back into the router. If you go to VPN, open VPN, you will see that the service is indeed started. So that yes there, that's the PID number of the service that's running. It is enabled, uh, the port is 443, and the protocol is TCP. Um, you should at this point be able to browse the web. So let's just see if we can hit good old DuckDuckGo. Yep, that works. Now, how do I know if I am, you know, uh, protected, right? Well, Nord P NordVPN uh, provides us with the ability to hit their page and at the top, they will tell you what your public IP address is and whether you are protected. So that means that I am connected to their service. And um, if I wasn't, there would be a red unprotected there. Typically, if you've done something wrong, you're not going to be able to browse the web after you reboot. So you'll find that you, know, you can't really go anywhere, basically, that your traffic is just seemingly stuck. You might Your local area network will work more than likely you can ping things on the inside you just can't get anywhere on the outside so here you go this is uh, how to get your VPN service up and running and I guess just to kind of prove that it's working let me go ahead and fire up another VM here and um, uh, we will just uh, ensure that you know more than one host right uh, works at one time so Let's just go back to overview here. Okay, I had to renew my IP address. So there we see, um, if I go back, this is the machine I'm connected on now. Make sure I'm still able to browse. Yep. Make sure I'm still protected here. Yep. All right. So now I am going to uh, fire up another VM.
All right, so here we have uh, just one of my Kali boxes. We'll open a browser here. We'll just hit our router. Great, so here we are, and as you can see here, I was mint gold, now I'm Cali gold. And uh, let's just go hit nordvpn.com, and there we are, protected. Great, so this is how it works. Uh, thanks for the topic. Um, this really was a challenge uh, with OpenWRT. But I hope this helps you get up and running. Now, if you want to stay tuned, there are some optional scripts on the NordVPN site. All right, so if you're interested in preventing the VPN leak, these are the four files that we are going to create slash modify. And essentially what a VPN leak is, um, it occurs whenever your VPN tunnel basically drops. So your connection to the VPN drops for whatever reason, but your internet connection on the WAN is still up and running, right? So it's now instead of your data traversing the VPN tunnel, which is encrypted, it's now just connected to the internet through your ISP and, and routing that way. So it's considered a leak because you know your data is now no longer encrypted with a VPN connection and it's leaking out in an unencrypted fashion on the internet. So the idea behind these scripts is to monitor the connection state of the VPN tunnel. And if it sees it go down, it will essentially restart the connection. That's the idea. So I'm just going to give you some quick uh, screenshots by opening these files. I will put the um, scripts in the description of the video below along with the steps um, that I used uh, in this video as normal uh, for you, you know, to have uh, for review. Okay, so here we go. So this is our first one here, this firewall.user. You can feel free to pause the video if you want to, if you want to review this. Then we have this uh, hot plug prevent leak. Same thing if you want to pause and review. Then we are modifying our rc.local, referring to this reconnect.sh script. Pause if you want to review. And then finally, we have the reconnect script itself. And pause if you want to review. And that's it. Once you create these files, you will simply restart the router, uh, which I've already done here. And um, as you can see, uh, I can freely browse the web. And I am also still in a protected state. And uh, my uptime here is two hours, 47 minutes. So I don't really know, um, you know how stable this, these scripts are, how well they work. I haven't really used them in practice long term. But just by reading them in general terms, it seems pretty straightforward. And it seems to be, um, you know, a decent solution for monitoring the, the tunnel state and keeping it up and active for you. So this is it in a nutshell. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, please feel free to leave any comments below. And uh, any ideas for future videos are always welcome. Thanks a lot and stay safe out there. Feel free to like and subscribe, hit the alarm bell for notifications on future videos, and comments for topics you'd like me to cover. Thanks again.